Everybody knows that exercise is to build strong muscles and even strong bones. And we understand that from a physiological area because we have thousands and thousands of studies that prove that to us. But did you know there is a biochemical side to those muscles? Most people who know me know that I talk about the emotional side of muscles as well as the physical side. And today we're going to talk about a new review, a narrative review that came out in Dr. Peter Atilia's newsletter uh, talking about just the biochemical changes. So there's more to the story for exercise and today I'm going to give you more reasons as to why you should continue. Welcome back to the Muscle Repair Shop. My name is Butch Fels. I'm a functional massage therapist and today we're going to talk about the biochemical side of muscles. As I was mentioning earlier in our opening today, we're talking about how we know from thousands and thousands of studies how exercise makes our muscles stronger, you can burn fat, it can make us healthier, but what we don't really know a lot about is how does it affect us biochemically? What do I mean by that? So anyone who's listened to my videos on this channel will not understand when I talk about the emotional response. That if I feel sad or I feel angry or I'm happy, the muscle system in my body changes based on that. The fight or flight response is the common uh, phrase for that. But today we're going to talk about more on a chemical side of the muscles themselves and how it literally affects a lot of systems in our body. So, as listening or read, reading a newsletter this morning from Dr. Peter Atilia, who has a podcast called The Drive, and if you haven't listened to it, it's a very good podcast to listen to. I'd highly recommend it. However, he was talking about a narrative review called Aud Buyer et al. And I'll put that into the notes down below in the description, the link to this particular article by Dr. Atilia. I, th I think it's worth reading for nearly everybody on the planet. But anyway, this narrative review was talking about how the muscles are like a endocrine organ themselves. They literally produce uh, enzymes or proteins and peptides, I should say. And these proteins and peptides are called myokines. Now, when, you're, when your body creates those myokines, it can help regulate systemic inflammation throughout your body, including your brain. And so the purpose of this narrative review was to look at how low skeletal muscle mass can correlate or contribute to cognitive abilities in, in an older person. So the thing that, that was striking about that is that as you understand that that muscle movement increases the myokines and the more muscle movements you have the more myokines you have with that now what happens is the the things like systemic inflammation which is inflammation throughout your whole body including the brain it can even contribute to insulin resistance it can contribute to abnormal protein accumulation and it can contribute to disrupt, disruptions in the mitochondria in every cell in your body so the mitochondria in each cell in your body is sort of like a double A battery. And when they're working well, your cells are healthier, they work better, you work better. And so by having this movement, the muscles themselves start to generate and create and release more myokines throughout your body, which is going to affect every organ pretty much in your body. It's going to keep you healthy. But in this one particular case, they we're talking about the cognitive abilities as we age declining due to lack of movement. And so for many of us, especially as we get into our later years in life, when we think about working out, our first thought process is to go to extreme levels. We don't need to be running marathons. We don't need to be lifting the back end of our car. It's not necessary that we do that. But what we do need to be able to do is stand up, walk any distance pretty much we want, maintain our balance. And when we can do that, not only are we doing things like I've talked about many times of lubricating our joints and lubricating the disc in our back and taking the pressure off the nerves in our bodies, 
Now with this review, what we're seeing is we're also increasing the myokines in the body, which is going to allow us not to have the inflammation, which leads to stiffness in the body, not to have inflammation in the brain, which can lead to cognitive decline, help us with our insulin resistance as we're losing weight and, and we're getting our body in a healthier state, and keeping our cells healthy, the mitochondria are keeping our cells healthy. And I would also add to this study that when we start looking at the food's effect on our body, and we're eating a more anti-inflammatory diet, you are gonna help our muscles reduce that inflammation. And as most doctors, whether they're cardiologists or neurologists, orthopedists will tell you that the inflammation in our bodies is a major cause of most of the major diseases in our body. So the simple act of moving, standing up out of a chair without having to use your hands is a simple movement that you can do. And if you're limited in your movement, don't start out trying to do 100 things. In fact, I remember when I was 37 years old and I weighed 315 pounds, I had a one bedroom apartment. Walking around my apartment three times wore me out. I get it, I get it. Start small, start small in your house. Some simple things you can do is to, like I said, stand up, learn how to stand up and get your legs stronger without having to use your hands to hold on to the handles of the chair. Learn how to, as you stand next to your counter, hold on to the counter with your hand and lift one foot up and see if you just slightly move your hand off the counter, how strong your feet and legs are. And the more you do this, the stronger they will get. Walk around your house. I don't care if it's a one bedroom apartment, walk around your house. And as you get where you can walk around your house seven, eight, nine, ten 10 times and not feel tired, the next step I took on my life and my journey was to walk around my building. In your case, you may walk around your house or your building, either one. And then from there, you build out walking around the block. And then you can walk for a mile and then two miles and so on. But the point is, is that you start small. And as you start small, this then starts to get the body moving, start to get you into that frame of mind that I can do more and I can do more. But if you start out trying to be an Olympic athlete day one and you haven't worked out in years, forget it. That's not going to happen. Final thing. One of the things that I did when I first started, because trust me, I was fat and I was weak and I was all those terrible things, was I took a gallon milk jug and I filled it about 25% of water and I would lift, do what they call a bicep curl, lift that sitting in my chair as I was working my way back. When I got to where I could do two sets of 10 of those, I would move it up to 50%, then 75%, and then finally a full jug. Little things like that you can do that will change your life. And like I've always said in most of my videos, before you try any exercises, especially if you're dealing with any heart conditions or, or health conditions that could be detrimental, always please check with your doctor. Let them know what you're doing they're not gonna they're not gonna stop you what they're gonna do it helps them in their investigation and in keeping you healthy and keeping you alive that if they know what you're doing they can coordinate their treatment plans around that but please always talk to them first and if you like this and, and want to send it to a friend you can subscribe down below ring the bell share it with your friends and for now see ya <laughs>